<sighs> liminal spaces. To some, liminal spaces is a cringe joke that nobody likes to bring up. To others, it was a trend that died off years ago along with the Vasco girls, if you guys remember that. And to others, it was a phenomenon that just out of nowhere, they woke up one day and they were like, oh my gosh, liminal spaces are everywhere. They're in my backyard, in my bathroom, and even in my toilet. And they're not wrong. Liminal spaces are indeed everywhere. But what are liminal spaces? Well, lucky for us, all-knowing Google knows the definition of liminal spaces. Google defines liminal spaces to be transitional areas. This is the area between point A to point B. Say, for example, you're trying to go to Schooly, right? And you're using your car. The liminal space would technically be your car. That is the space in between point A to point B. But then again, it could extend to like all the places in between point A to point B. It could even be a gas station. Those are all liminal spaces, places that you're only there temporarily to get you to your next point. This is the boring dimension. But you and I both know that that once the internet caught wind of this, they were like, you know what? Luminal spaces are so much more. They're not just transitional places. They are a state of being. They're metaphorical. So the example that Google uses is when you're going through a divorce, because you know, everybody goes through a divorce at one point in their life. And there's you before the divorce and there's you after the divorce. The liminal space would be the transitional period from you going from being not divorced to being divorced. But the internet didn't just stop there. They wanted to make luminal spaces much more aesthetically pleasing. So they decided to make them sometimes nostalgic, at times eerie, and sometimes repetitive, showing the same house over and over and over as you're walking down this sort of neighborhood. <laughs> Where's the time? And even though the internet was starting to gravitate away from what the real meaning of liminal spaces was, they started developing something more in liminal spaces. They started using liminal spaces as a form of art style, an art style known as escapism. About this one, I call it bold and brash. More like belongs in the trash. <laughs> Sorry, I must have missed that one. And Google defines escapism as the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. And in layman's terms, it means that you're using something to escape from your harsh reality. So why did the internet start using liminal spaces as a form of escapism? Because if you really think about it, maybe the person on the internet decides to lay on the sidewalk and they don't want to go home because once they get home, there's like a lot of problems. Maybe their spouse is really angry with them because they won't change themselves or maybe the spouse is just really abusive well if they stay on the sidewalk indefinitely that sidewalk becomes a form of escapism because they're supposed to get home and maybe at that point in time they feel sort of detached from their problems they feel like their problems can't affect them at least while they lay on the sidewalk and not to make myself seem even more of a nutcase than i already look I kind of understand the appeal of liminal spaces. It's not so much as the liminal space itself, it's more of the state of mind that it puts you in when you're in these type of places. And I'm not gonna lie, to a certain degree, I kind of understand the feeling. It's kind of like when I play video games and my character ends up in an elevator. I always think to myself, what would actually happen if my character stayed in this elevator indefinitely? Like, how would the game progress? And at that point, you know, the game would pause. The game would pause until you actually start doing something. And that's probably the feeling that people get whenever they're in these liminal spaces. They kind of feel like for a brief moment, the world around them sort of pauses. And liminal spaces is not just something that the internet thought of on their own. Liminal spaces have actually been used in a lot of the media that we consume today. Take, for example, Spirited Away. Do you remember that scene where Jahiro is sitting with No Face on a train going to, I think it was a witch's house? But they're just sitting there and for five minutes they're doing absolutely nothing. This in a way is a form of a liminal space. And the crazy thing is, as much as we like to make fun of liminal spaces, is that this is one of the most memorable scenes in all of Spirit Away. Because we the viewers understand and feel the same detachment that Jihiro is feeling when she's on that train with no fate. Because when we're on the train with Jihiro, we have time to reflect on what Jihiro had already experienced. She experienced her parents turn into pigs. The guy next to her tried to eat her a couple scenes ago, and now she has to go and meet up with a witch she doesn't know anything about to apologize for her dragon friend. Her dragon friend that was dying also a couple scenes ago. So it makes sense for the train to become an illuminal space for Chihiro because we have to remember Chihiro is a little girl and for all of that to happen to Chihiro, 
like she kind of needs this. She kind of needs that feeling of detachment. She needs that feeling where she can have a moment of peace, a moment to breathe because she has so much going on. And we as the viewer sort of feel that same thing along with Chihiro. We end up looking out the window with the other characters and we see how everything's just so far away, so detached from us. And just like the internet, Studio Ghibli decided that liminal spaces could be so much more. They're not just transitional places. They're not just a form of detachment. They could also be a metaphor for growth. A lot of the Spirit Away community agree that Jihiro in this scene is sort of leaving behind her child self and becoming a more mature person. The train is a form of growth. The liminal space is taking her from her being a child to her becoming more mature as a person. And surprisingly, it's not something that only Studio Ghibli does. A lot of other shows do the same thing. Take, for example, Avatar Last Airbender. What? what? When? When, when do, do they, they ever use liminal spaces, spaces in Avatar, Avatar Last, Last Airbender? Airbender? Well, if we take a quick look at most of the episodes of Avatar Last Airbender, we end up seeing almost the same ending on most of these episodes, which is when the gang get on Appa and end up flying away into the sky. Kind of similar to the ending of Greece, where the two main characters get in the car and they end up flying away into the sky, which is really weird because how and when was a car able to fly into the sky and why is everybody applauding like it's such a normal thing? But anyway, Appa ends up becoming a form of a liminal space for the characters in the show. Appa ends up being what the train was for Jihiro, a time for the characters to think, to breathe, to even grow as characters. And these endings give the characters time to reflect amongst themselves. Like Katara ends up learning that she shouldn't be stealing from people and that it's really bad unless they're from pirates or like Sokka ends up learning that he should trust his instincts a little bit more because sometimes they're right and a lot of times they're wrong. But these endings when the characters are in these liminal spaces are not always bittersweet. It's not always a time for self-reflection. Sometimes they're used metaphorically like to give a bittersweet moment. Like for Aang when he was watching the Southern Air Temple disappear slowly into the distance. It's kind of like Jihiro leaving behind her immaturity, but for Aang, Aang was leaving behind essentially his people, his culture, or even his family. And this was after the scene that Katara ends up telling Aang like, hey, I understand what you're going through is really hard, but you have to understand that Sokka and I are your new family and that you don't have to shoulder this burden of saving the world on your own. And when you look back at the scene, Appa ends up becoming a space for Aang to process things, to understand that this is how things are now. And it's also not crazy to say that in that moment, Appa also becomes an escape for Aang because Aang is seeing the air temple slowly disappear into the distance. It's almost to say for Aang that he's leaving that harsh reality for a more kinder reality. He's also not going to let him being the only airbender stop him from becoming the person he needs to be for the world. But with all of that said, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree or disagree with my opinion on Luminal Spaces? Or do you guys feel like Luminal Spaces are just cringe in general? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like trash content like this, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It'll really help out my channel. This is Stupid Takes. Good night and goodbye.